And supply chain is such a dynamic field that changes and evolves almost daily. And this year, the logistics and transportation industry has been affected by various strikes that really could have seriously impacted our day-to-day -day life. To speak a little bit more on logistics and transportation, we have Dr. Rodolfo Santa Maria from Western Governors University. Dr. Santa Maria, I'm going to invite you onto the stage now. Dr. Santa Maria has over 35 years of experience leading business transformations, strategy development, operations management, IT and supply chain. He's also a lecturer, program director and researcher with over 12 years of experience in remote and in-person instruction. So welcome, Dr. Santa Maria. Thank you, happy to be here. Great, I am going to hop off stage and I'm gonna turn the time over to you. When we finish, I'll hop back on and we'll do a Q&A, okay? Okay, thank you. I take you from here. So during my career, it's 40 years, uh, adding five years when I was in school, and I can relate what uh, Stuart was saying. I always struggle uh, in my life because I speak three languages and it's very different. And the way that you think in the different environment and when you are in manufacturing, when you are in product retail and also in service companies. I have the pleasure, and I say pleasure now, uh, that I work for companies such as uh, Stanley Black & Decker, uh, also for ADT, that is uh, one of the biggest private equity uh, security companies today, Johnson Controls as Tyco International. Uh, also, Faris Ventures is a big company, uh, and also private equity, um, Platinum Equity, that had the, the chance to really be working with the CEO on as a vice president for uh, for one of their portfolio companies. And also Grupo Vitro, that has the biggest uh, glass manufacturing in the world, that is stationed in, in uh, they have a lot of furnaces around the world and it's coming from Italy. And also in semiconductors. That gave me the expertise uh, to really start working on what I want to do the next. And I remember when I was really small in elementary school and I saw a man landing on the moon, and this has struck me since then. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And I said, mm, I want to do something in my life. I want to be and do something, or my family has to do something. I decided to become a pilot. I, I was living in uh, overseas in a small country called Costa Rica in Central America. And I said, well, how do I start here? And I was, I was in uh, fifth grade, I believe. And I started to say, okay, I want to be a pilot. So I started just working my way through. I never uh, thought differently. So I didn't have that opportunity then. And I became an engineer and I worked for an American company. This American company transformed into the United States. And uh, when I got here into the United States, I was exposed to what it was called then just transportation and logistics, that the, the concept of supply chain does not, was well defined and decided to go, okay, so what, what this is? Because I needed to do 60 credits just to uh, recognize my degree from uh, Costa Rica into the United States. And I said, hmm, I very reinvent myself. My kids were really small. And I said, again, uh, one small step and I just to move forward. So I decided to go into my MBA and then decided after that, going to my PhD. And again, important to note that I am Spanish speaking and I needed to do my PhD in English. And also I chose a very difficult topic that is macroeconomics to do my dissertation. And uh, it was not that easy. So how can really evolve and help the people and, and what should I do? So I started being involved in, okay, supply chain. I did that in my, in my country, I said, okay, what. What, what that is. So how do I put these things together? I started as a buyer. Uh, then before that, in, in my country, I started like a, in manufacturing. He was just changing the oil here and doing something on the ground. And I said, no, I want to become a leader here. I want to become that. I want just to be something. I want to really help people. And then I saw an opportunity going into, okay, being a buyer. I said, okay, I can buy things, move things around and start just to what the steps and it would be global 
what global means at that time. So I don't speak Japanese. I don't speak Chinese. I so what should I do? So I started to really uh, start moving and say, okay. So that's this this concept came along. I said globalization. So what that means? Okay. So complex interconnected processes. And then I decided to go into depth, deep, deeper into that. So I then into e-commerce. So what is e-commerce? So we just started with the internet. So how do we do that? And it was great that Danica just talked about AI and, and machine learning. That does not exist before that. So imagine that doing it in paper. I don't know if you imagine yourself today without any computer or an iPhone in your hands. Uh, an iPhone is your life and say, Okay, so why should it do next? So who's doing where? The social media. So you put something there and everything the next day become viral if you do something uh, something wrong or something very good. So new technologies comes along. So now all of a sudden logistics and transportation become something. So being in moving goods from one place to another and transportation. And I came to an idea, said, okay, so if we move goods, we can move bytes, B-Y-T-E-S. So we can move digital information. So how we can do that? So I started just to get into, into see what, how these two will come together. And, and I got very involved in, into the digital space. It wasn't called digital then, so it was, uh, zeros and ones and then an importance of logistics because there is a lot of pirates uh, out there there is a lot of uh, ways that we need just to really maintain the cost down how to improve the customer service how we can put together uh, our locations manufacturing distribution warehousing inventory closer to the customer and again thinking from the leadership perspective uh, okay, looking from top down and say how we can improve this, how we can do that, how we can really get things going in, in to reduce costs, to improve this customer service and, and increase the profits for the company. So then a lot of challenges started to come. So how do we, how do we go about that? How, what do we do? And then volatility. I was in charge of a region that had a, it's an earthquake prone. And we had, a, for those of you that know the mining industry, Chile is one of the biggest uh, producer of um, copper ore. And they send the products into the United States just to become ingots and then so on for cables and Canada. So an earthquake, big earthquake, 7.2 hit Chile. So at that time, my God, so, how do we move this along? How do we move this? Uh, how do we get copper? Where do we go? And uh, this caused a lot of political instability also in other countries, uh, economic crisis all over the place. And then it would be more complex in order to start moving that. How, how do we move uh, things faster and how we can manage all this information at the same time? God, it was a... Uh, really emotional and from the leadership perspective and i remember going to my boss with bad news every day and something that i learned early on is when i got to my boss with a problem i had to have at least two solutions and so i came say let's talk about information security how we can communicate how we can close and open our containers and send us a signal so what are you talking about how we can do that so we started just to talk on, on ways of doing that. So, and I remember going to South Africa and saying, okay, how we can, I was looking at NASCAR one, uh, one Sunday and I saw a big bag uh, getting in a, in a, in a truck where this, these cars are getting the, the fuel from and getting into the cars, so a bag. So today we were paying, at that time, we were paying around $12,000 to move liquids around the world. And I said, okay, so what if we put these liquids into bags? So what kind of bags are there? So I went, I remember at that time it was Sealand and say, can we put a bag in your, in your truck? They said, excuse me, 
yes, can I put a bag in your in your truck? I mean, this cargo, I pay for the weight and I just start moving cargo. So I was with a company based in Minnesota and they gave me the, the go ahead just to go in innovation and say, hey, uh, I, I want to move bags. And they, they thought that I was crazy. I mean, this is something, they, all, all the innovators are crazy, right? So they said, okay, Rodolfo, we're gonna, gonna give you at least 2% to, check, to, to, to test this. I said, thank you, boss. I went to South Africa, I bought these bags, I filled them in, uh, in uh, PVA, it was the name of the chemical. And I started moving and immediately the cost of moving this bag was 30% of the cost. The rest is history. That, that gave me the chance to go into the United States and gave me two regions in order to improve that and scale that up, just using bags, a different type of innovation. People come to me, no, it needs to be a stainless steel and, and it needs to be, uh, you cannot move milk in this. I said, yes, you do. Yes, you do. This is a food grain. So, so we started moving, moving bags around the world. So it was an, an interesting thing that at the time it was the future. So what, what can we do? Today is different. Today we have e-commerce and you're talking about the way that you want to call e-commerce. Uh, the digital commerce, uh, you have big companies like Amazon and the Walmart and, uh, and the Chinese companies in Asia. They're all reliable because when you order something, you expect that to come the next day. How does product get there? And again, from the leadership perspective, so why can, what can we do? So one of the things that I was talking and listening to Danica got get me very excited because this is what I saw before. This is what we're living now. And this is, this is it. This is today. We're there. So how can we use that wisely? That's the key and ethically so supply chain is a good candidate but we can we, we can go and use that in the supply chain so how can we do um i i went to mit for a certification and got to say uh, iot and blockchain and and cyber security say can, can we have this cyber security things so or how we can use the iot how i can get the data and how we can move this so i tasked my team and the business uh, intelligence said guys i need to to analyze how we can get all this data from this machine, because I'm an advocate, I'm a, a master black belt in, in Lean Six Sigma. And I said, okay, I want to see metrics. I want to see data. And I want to make some decisions based on the metrics. So what data are you bringing back to me? And uh, the same applies for the service company like banks, insurance companies, uh, recruiting, higher education, the same as product uh, like Stanley Black & Decker, like tools, like uh, many others, they're, they're the same. It's just the way that you apply the concept. So I wanted to have a standard concept all along from the leadership perspective. I want to have something that I can put my hands on and convert it into a highly profitable or reduced cost information for me. And then sustainability came along. I said, okay, so what sustainability? So I um, I remember my my formation in my country was green, so we used a lot of eolic and a lot of uh, electrics and and hydraulics. So I said, okay, so how can we do that? And I started just to get involved with partners and say or reduce. They call it now carbon print and all of that, but it's just a matter of reducing cost. So how can you do things efficiently? I got two sons. One is. Um, a rocket scientist. He's the uh, space, uh, spacecraft subsystem uh, lead to maintain the astronauts alive for the new lunar lander. So picking his brain, I said, what, what's next? How do you do that? I said, well, I'm working with Artemis, I'm working with this, and I'm working with that, and I have to do all this uh, data. So how do you get the data? Uh, well, we have the Dragon today that goes into the space station, and now uh, Boeing is going on to have the other one and I get the data and, and I analyze the data. Yeah, what, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for patterns and redundancy. Okay, patterns and redundancy. That is stuck with me. I said, okay, so when you do patterns, uh, that's the way that you look for in any of operational excellence metrics. So what are the patterns here? So when you, when you define the issue, then you start um, got the metrics to analyze and, and then uh, control. So, so what do you do? 
then you go into in going to innovations again, say patterns. Hmm. And then I went to my other son. My other son is a director of public health and a doctor in John Hopkins University. So I picked his brain and said, how, how did you go about COVID, COVID-19? So what do you do? How do you keep your numbers so, so low? I said, I went against the establishment in, the, in my town. I was really very stringent. I presented the data, I presented the algorithm, and I said, for every person that comes in infected, four or five will be infected in a day, and then after 10 days, you start seeing dead people. So just put it in a layman words. So I said, he started to do that. I said, okay, so how can I go that into logistics and transformation and pass that into the students, pass that into uh, the employees just to make uh, sound decisions? So again, we started using this data analytics. Okay, so uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm great just to, I was excited just to hear the Danica and the way she did it and, and the way she's passionate about that because we need person like her in order just to, as a leader, guide her, do this, do that, do that, move here, get here. I, I want you to analyze this. So this example that I got in big data, this is uh, similar to what uh, Danica just shared is 10% reduction in cost and 5% increase in sales to start, just to start. And then how we can go new, this 21st century supply chain view, again, it's not new. It just happens that from the year 1999, uh, went into the year 2000 and everyone was afraid of this digital transformation is going to happen in the computer, everything will start to crash down. And then like the Moore's law, every 18 months, the information technology changes. So what are we expecting? Now you're seeing a lot of politicians going around artificial intelligence. Oh, I want them to recognize my face. I want to, this has been going on since 2007. I was in the security industry. For those of you involved in Blackberries, uh, Blackberry started with that. Those are the brains in the market for, for security. Today, the security industry is so strong that they can open and close your house if you want to, just reading your magnetic signals. Every one of us has personal magnetic signals. So these devices can really read, read you and when you're close into home, maybe 10 feet away, your locks started to, to open, your lights started to move, and many other things. So be scared because it's here and has been here for a while. Now it's because we are there ready to market. There are big companies investing in what's the next step. So what that means into transportation. Okay, so let, let's put it in perspective. So we're going into third parties, we're going into 3PLs, 4PLs, so we can do that. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to start really investing into growing this industry to get the products or services closer to the customer. Globalization was there before and it was getting closer even being global. You can get a product from China today in seven days. I don't know if you knew that, but you can order it in Amazon or eBay or uh, Alibaba, and then you, you hit that, and if you clear customs correctly, it would be in your house within seven days. So these are the kind of things that really have us thinking. So my God, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy, what do we need to do? So for me, being a, an operational excellence practitioner and an innovator in whatever I do, and I said, okay, so what can make a significant impact next? So big data, analytics, visibility, how do we move things around? Well, this has been here. So what's the impact that, that I want to create uh, from these innovations? Okay, look at the self-driving vehicles today. Four years ago, People were afraid of cars driving by itself. So you can really sleep in the car. How many accidents? Four or five, okay? Out of maybe a million cars that are out there, 
Of course, it's important this for accidents because you learn from them, like the the aviation industry. You learn from the accident to get safer and safer and safer. That's innovation. So now, when you go, how can we make the impact in the supply chain? Being a leader, you, when you are in a leadership position, you have the chance to make a difference. Being an innovator, using people like, like, like Danica, say, hey, I want to go this route. I want to go that route. Let's look at this. Let's move things around. How we can work with providers and make things better for them. How we can get transportation more efficient. How we can move this around. So you as a leader is how you think. Doing it with people that know better than you. So your team has to be always better than you in order for you to be successful. And this is what we need, the future of global supply chain innovation. So what are the areas that are coming to come? Okay, again, you saw in Danica's presentation, artificial intelligence. The other one, blockchain technology, everyone is afraid of that, or Bitcoins, and oh my goodness, how we can do that? Well, that's the cost of innovation. You have some failures, you have some crooks along the way too. But again, these are the kind of things that you need, again, thinking in the future. The 3D printing today, you will be amazed what the type of materials that are out there today in the automotive industry and a lot of them also in the aviation industry. So they have to go through stringent safety procedures in order to do that. But it is important to have that information metrics back in order just to really preclude people say, oh, 3D, oh, I got a, um, a harness in, in 3D. Okay, so I always a firm believer in innovation. Corvette has been my passion for a while. I have a, a Z51 because I thought that was the best car out there. Not the new one, but it was the C7. And why? Because I saw the innovation coming through since the, I was just a small child. I loved them. So, and I said, when is the, the time to get one? So I said, well, when I, I think the innovation is there and I can do that. Well, I did it. And this car has a lot of 3d printing in it believe it or not so uh, and it is important to have that why because they drive the cost down these innovations are important on how do you really see if these innovations are worth it well metrics go back big data and analytics get your data analytics big business that use that 10 percent lower cost they can predict demand, identify the risks. How we can do that, how we can uh, use whatever they are, exponential smoothing, regression, uh, algorithms, so whatever. So we need to get people in our team that are able to provide that metrics for persons like me can make some decisions for everybody. This is important to have that. Uh, we are creating leaders. Our students are leaders of tomorrow. So they need to, we need to equip them with the right information to make the right decisions. And one of the, again, the notions that I said, I said, when I get to a level where I need to pass my experience out, out there, even they like it or not, I go into teaching. I, I, I can continue to go being in the industry. I can continue being a, a chief operating officer. I can continue being in the board somewhere. I chose, I chose to go and pass information to students. That was it. I made that decision three years ago, and now I'm here doing that. And this is my passion. How do you can really get this new, take afraid, let's say, get the, the, let people not be afraid of innovation. Innovation has their failures, yes. But again, go back into the self-driving vehicles, global market for drones. 
Have you seen the, the Olympics? Have you seen the, these big events now that you can see all these drones flying by? You think that they fly by people just having each one of them? No. Machine learning, artificial intelligence, programming, digital. That's, imagine now if we had this, these two powerful countries, Ukraine and Russia, having a war. If they want to, they can kill everybody. They are choosing to strike little bits and pieces to really tease the West or really tease the East or really tease others. But they can wipe anyone out anytime. So again, in innovation is out there. So how can we do really to get this innovation going forward and how we can nurture providers to really work with us, moving products closer, now we are getting into near shore from offshore. So we're getting very close into having these products. I, I order products, what, what people were not thinking about maybe even a year ago. I ordered a product at night and it arrives early in the morning in, the, in my house from Amazon. So, this three PLs make it happen. I live in a I live in Indiana. You have more than twelve million square foot corridor between Kentucky and Indianapolis. You got the biggest distribution center that I ever seen in my life. I had the chance to work as a, a, a chief information officer at one company in my past and set up all the the virtualization for Amazon servers in the different distribution centers. So I had the chance and the, the biggest I have seen at the time was a million square foot. Today, we have one here, like maybe 10 minutes from my house, that is 2.5 million square foot with around maybe 500 doors each side. Uh, and this is the way that we are. These are the three PLs and they work with the third parties too. Walmart has that. And also regulations. So how we can go and make sure the regulations are there in order just to, to really control this uh, scale up and so labor. So how we can really go and have the labor needed. Students, that's one of the reasons I, I, I went into education, in higher education. We need as leaders, people that can make decisions, that can make things happen for you ethically, fast, with data. And these demands are growing and growing. Why? Because operations, operational excellence supply chain is based on metrics. So the growth, the growth for this is expected uh, between 7% between 2020 and 2030. So how we can feel that? Again, the need for technology in order to do that, we need to prepare our students, employees of the future, future leaders on how they can be at ease with technology. This is very important. This is something that you have to have in front of you at all times. For the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, 77% of supply chain professionals said that their companies are investing in new technologies. And 63% said that they are hiring employees with technology skills. What that means, technology skills. Look at what Danica just presented to us. So high level, great metric driven, great information, but imagine people that like her that we need in the market today, how we can get them, how we can really uh, nurture them, how we can really uh, motivate them to continue. This shortage, this is the biggest problem we have. Not because they want to, because they're not used to. Go back into innovation. You have laggards and you have people that really embrace the, 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 the adopters for the innovation. They have people in the middle that need some time in order to adjust.
but those laggards will stay behind. In any transformation that I have done in my life, more than 33% of the labor needed to be restructured, either because they didn't have the skills, they didn't want to continue growing, or they didn't want to do it. The opportunity was there, but they didn't want to embrace it. And that's a fact, and this is where these issues are happening today. Baby boomers today are being tapped in the, in the shoulder and say, please, can you go back and help me set this up? Please, I need someone from the leadership perspective that can really uh, move this. And again, a baby boomer with no innovation. Again, we go back to the old ways. We don't want to go to the accounting in, in paper. So we really want to use Office all along and Tableau and, and how about this technology in front of you and how about this software, a mini tab, so in order just to get the data from you. So the global shortage for skilled supply chain work at, workers are expected to reach 8 million for 2030. Again, increasing 7% and also the shortage 8%. How we can bridge that gap? Leaders, leaders like us here. That's why, again, go back in my motivation of going into higher education. I need these leaders for my sons, for my family, for my grandsons. Because we want a country that can really analyze data, not afraid of education. We need data-driven people. We need people that can really think ethically, that can think innovative, and can have the data in front of them. Look at the facts. And then the other part is wages. Well, today the average uh, wage for logistics and supply chain managers is around 108,000 by May 2020, remember, this is public information, the current information that I use, I can share, but I can share the 2020, 25% uh, higher than the average. Then imagine what it is today with all of this technology that is all around us. Also, I'm a firm believer in diversity, equity, and inclusion, because I was part of that. I needed to learn culture. I didn't know what the acronym, United States work with acronyms. I was not aware of those. I still today, I have issues with acronyms. I need to know what they are because APA can mean many things to many people. And, um, and when we say, uh, let's say supply planning, it's, it's, it's an OP. SOP, well, standard operating procedures or sales and operations processes or sales uh, uh, and operations. So I needed to learn that. So we needed to really see how we can just really get into the lingo piece and, and how to really get acquainted with the different cultures. Because if you bring somebody from the outside, when I said the outside coming from overseas in another or another language or another culture, they need to be really aware of what you got. So that's why inclusion is important and the equity to have the say in what you need to do. And also, the other piece that I'm really advocating very hard is to having education in another language. So we have here in the United States, the second growing, the, the highest growing language in the United States is Spanish, more than 300 million. Are we tapping that market in education? I've been involved only with one university in South Florida that was willing to do an MBA in Spanish. And again, it's the way of thinking. When you are bilingual, eh, it doesn't matter, English and Spanish, but however, usually your, uh, your primary language is the one that you can really just get you faster. You don't have to think twice. Uh, in my areas, when I had to deal with the Italians, for instance, even it's close to Spanish, I had issues just negotiating and having conversations, French, uh, Portuguese, and now Spanish, and now English is the completely opposite. Um, they always say that Spanish is, is, is backwards than English. And I said, no, English is backwards with Spanish. So 
So this way, sometimes I, I try to really pause and think on special, so, some specific words that I need to, to really use in order to be, uh, how you call it, polite and, and really uh, with, with equity. So it's very important to say here that women make up only 28% of the supply chain's workforce. Look at those numbers. So we need just to really move around. Now, I'm very passionate about this because this is how humans and technology interact. We need to have those humans that can really be prepared to interact with artificial intelligence. Again, go back into what Danica presented. It was really timely for me because it is AI. Okay, so you got Internet of Things. So what do you do? How do you use this data? How do you analyze that? how you Walmart embrace that always work on being in the vanguard and, and, and Amazon so how they can do that so I can move the information faster to see the, the out of stock and and how they can just really see the information and, and the tasks that are needed and hey you are you are behind in your stuff where the task is behind so how can you do that how you can really implement something and identify risks before they happen Danica expressed that very well in saying, um, data, no problem. Artificial intelligence, music, no problem. That one becomes into a different ways of dealing with information on the way that we communicate, not only in English, but imagine other languages. When you have like Puerto Rico, that is a part of the United States, they have Spanish. Uh, all over, you go to New York, you go to Chicago, you go to, to Dallas, you have different um, different parts that you can really see how this is going to be important for artificial intelligence for, okay, so how you deal with culture, how you deal with uh, other languages, how you deal with people with different ways of communication. How do you choose the people of the future that will interact with this and make decisions? Go back into the leaders. The leaders are the one that has to really be aware of what is needed. Internet of things all over, all over the place. Here, either you like it or not, all the data is there for you. Targeted advertising, when you go into Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, name it, LinkedIn, everywhere. You are there, either you like it or not, because this is data, the way you, you market, the way you do things, your patterns, your metrics. And then, however, the human touch is the most important because you have to make decisions don't let the machines make the decisions for you. Again, innovation is good, innovation is great, but it's up to the leaders. How do you want to handle that? How do you really want to go and analyze that? The humans are still responsible for what happened. Again, the machine says 30%, and if you said, yep, 30%, and it was 50%, you're out. The machine will stay there. It will adjust the machine. They will bring another person. And then you get into how do you use, do you use this in the supply chain wisely? How you can really upskill your supply chain workers? Stuken has a very well defined, I mean, simulation. Because it is, it is the way that you interact. You are sitting in a warehouse and you get bombarded by emails from uh, your friend, from the function, from uh, your employee, from your boss, from your, and then you have to make decisions on the fly. You make that decision and the simulation will tell you, well, not quite. This is what you need to do. So these are the kind of things that start into decision making process of the leaders of the future. So what you need is that next step. How can you do the 21st century operations and supply chain? And this is one of the things that I, I, I'm proud of developing with uh, WGU is how do you really have a professional that can have those skills? I spend in my past 
more than fifty thousand dollars training people because coming out of the university they didn't know what to do they did they were not aware of how the market operates because it was faster than the university technology changes every 18 months i wanted people to be i don't want people just to know office i want the new version of excel i don't want people just to have the cell that uh, multiply division and no, I have my phone now just to do that for me. I don't need a, an Excel to do that for me. I want Excel to be interlink, uh, interlink worksheets. I need, uh, again, cubes. I need other things. I need Tableau or be able to, to, to go and see different demographics, different uh, path checks. So these are the kind of things that we're expecting in the future. So to close this um, and everything that I just said, Innovation is very important. And supply chains are all around us for service companies. As I always say in my classes um, when I teach is students say, I'm in sales, I don't need supply chains. I'm in HR, I don't need supply chain. I am a nurse, I don't need supply chain. And I said, okay, do you know how the surgeon operates. Say, so of course, go into a room, they take the instrument, they just get, and the patient, they, they are very well. I mean, they, they, no. Without the instruments, the surgeon cannot operate. Without the machine that is in place in, in that room, he cannot use it. You cannot get the data from the machine either. If those humans around you are not hired, nothing happened. That's supply chain. Supply chain for a recruiting company, people. Supply chain for higher education, students. Supply chain for a bank, money. Where how, how the money gets into the ATM or the teller. Security. How the how the images when the security is triggered get into the cloud. That's supply chain. How your Amazon order gets into your door. That's true supply chain. How they move the product around. Supply chain is all around us. Is don't, don't don't be mistaken because trans, and also transportation. Internet happens to be one mode of transportation. They have seven layers. Second and third layer is again they transport the signals. So how can you how can you do that? So this is the twenty first century thinking. You have to be innovative. And now being innovative is having risks. And that's why your boss, the leaders of the future, needs to be aware that innovation has to exist. They need to separate two or three percent of their budget in order to do innovation. That's the new blog. Companies that would not innovate today would not be in existence tomorrow. A lot of cases about around that. So in order to really have that. It is important for you to know that everything, when you are in education, it starts with you. People will remember you or people will not remember you at all. Good or bad. I go back into Stuart comment. Oh yeah, supply chain is something about transportation. Yeah, and very difficult too because you had data and matrix at the time. There are people that are struggling today in order just to have that class really uh, fit in into whatever they need to do. So it is important for you to know that you need to be an advocate of innovation. You need to be in any level. And also, as a leader, you need to hire the best people because you are as good as the people you hire. If you don't have the power to hire, you need to best that you can be. And this is how you get places. Again, go back in my original step, one giant step from man, one small step from man. This is how you start everything, everything in life. So, and with that, I just get into questions. Great, thank you, Dr. Santa Maria. That was awesome. Uh, I do want to let you know that I have issues with acronyms also. So, 
they can be really tough at times. Um, I do want to invite anyone who has questions to enter them in. I have a couple and, and we'll jump right into those. Um, one question is, what are some of the skills that you focus on teaching your supply chain students to ensure they develop the strategic mindset to make business decisions? Decision making is the first one. Decision making is and critical thinking, those two. Because you have to have those skills in order to have, especially decision making. Sometimes people are afraid to make decisions. And also the critical thinking on, okay, so how, how do I think critically? Well, you need the data from Danica to make your decisions. And you really have to have the facts in order just to make those decisions. Resources, functions, where do you want to go? These two, I say, teach and really tell the students how to do that. And it will be to be, it has to be hands-on with specific examples. Great, thank you. Um, another question is, what current innovative technology are you most excited about and why? Uh, well, go back into artificial intelligence. Um, I, again, I went to, to MIT, not as, as, as deep as uh, Danica, but um, I was really enticed to see what else will come. Especially, I mean, the, I'm a security uh, and safety piece. And that's why I mentioned that, that let's say, the, um, the magnetism you have, the, the, the signals. And this is, they're picking up things that you won't believe. And talking to my son to so what is coming on, on what this innovation is going to be, because all these, all these rockets today are full of artificial intelligence and also data coming back. And the other piece is you need to create redundancy in everything you do, because you have to be fail safe. If you do something, you need to have a second one that could really back you up. And, and I'm, I'm exciting about to, to hear that. Because when you have self-driving automobiles, what happens if this fails? So what's the secondary? You have it in aviation, in the hydraulic system. You got the hydraulic system for the flaps and, the, and all, all of the control surfaces. And then you have a secondary one. And then a third one that is the manual. So you have three. And again, that's back into redundancy. And this is where technology needs to be present. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. Thank you, Dr. Santa Maria, for being here with us today. If you have any additional questions or you would like to connect with Dr. Santa Maria, feel free to click the link that we're going to put up on the bottom of your screen and you can connect with him. So thank you so much, Doctor. I'm going to allow you to hop off now and we'll move on to our next item.